there are a number of combination strategies with immune checkpoint blockade and urothelial cancer that are showing promise. Probably the furthest along is the combinations involving PD-1 or PD-1 blockade plus CTLA-4 blockade. We know from the Danube study that the combination of Dravalumab plus Trimalumab did not show a survival benefit compared to standard of care plant based chemotherapy for the first line treatment of patients with metastatic urethelial cancer as determined in the primary study analysis. However, in the secondary analysis, limiting the comparison to patients with high pd one expressing tumors, there actually was a, a benefit suggested. And so that combination certainly as, is of interest. Um, and the combination of CTLA-4 blockade plus PD-1 blockade, that is ipilimumab plus nivolumab, is being studied in the Checkmate 901 study, uh, which uh, we should have results for hopefully in the not too distant future uh, to define whether or not there's a role for, for such combinations. Other combinations showing lots of promise in smaller studies include combinations with antibody drug conjugates plus immune checkpoint blockade. We know that the combination of pembrolizumab plus infortimab vidotin results in a very high level of clinical activity in the frontline treatment of patients with uh, metastatic urethelial cancer in a smallish cohort of cisplatin ineligible patients, and that regimen has been moved forward to a number of phase three studies. More recently, we've seen combinations with anti-HER2 antibody drug conjugates with immune checkpoint blockade, also showing lots of promise, raising the concept of whether or not there's something special about antibody drug conjugates in terms of their immunomodulatory activity. And then finally, combinations with um, multi-target kinase inhibitors. We're seeing activity with combinations with citrovatinib, linvatinib, cabozantinib with PD-1 or PD-1 blockade. The mechanism of action of the multi-targeted kinase inhibitors and how they're conferring immunomodulatory activity isn't entirely clear, but potentially acting uh, by inhibiting or repolarizing suppressive myeloid cells. Uh, so promise for those combinations, and those are being advanced to larger studies as well.